we proceed on with this session, um, we're going to have kind of one setting the scene um, talk followed by a panel discussion. Um, so I'll invite all my panelists on stage and then uh, invite our speaker onto the podium. May I please have uh, uh, Shamoon Sultan, who's the founder and chief executive officer of Qadi. <laughs> Faisal Nadeem Riaz, who's the director of the Dolman Group. Faisal Saab. Aisha Daoud, who's the chief executive officer of Daoud Lawrence Pearl Limited. Oh, these applause have started to die down. A bigger round of applause, please. <laughs> Little less hooting, more applause. But uh, Rana Tariq Mahboob, who's the chairman of the Chain Store Association of Pakistan and CEO of Royal Tag. And last but not least, uh, Asfandi Arfaruk, uh, who's the senior vice chairman of the Chain Store Association of Pakistan and managing director of Hub Urban Brands. And to the podium, before the panel discussion, I invite the director of Dolman Group, Mr. Faisal Nadeem Riaz, to talk about transforming malls for the digital age. Okay, uh, thank you everyone for, uh, especially the host for putting together this event. Uh, you know, special thanks to Terabiz and CAP for bringing all the retailers and uh, different people together after a very long time. And we hope that this uh, sort of uh, events will keep taking place even further. Uh, you know, I feel that uh, there's a lot of talent sitting over here, which should also be, you know, speaking on stage. But uh, a lot of retailers here with a lot of experience, uh, you know, retail is not just numbers or just uh, channels. It's about the intrinsic value of, uh, of a product and of an experience which creates a differentiation. And there's so many people here which should be now uh, contributing on stage. So, you know, hopefully we'd like to see more representation from retailers uh, coming on stage and uh, talking about their experience and their brands. So, uh, you know, this is the image which we normally get for a shopping mall or for a retail. You know, eventually we'll all become warehouses for Amazon or, you know, after today, maybe JD.com or autonomous warehouses, you know. And... Uh, you know, it, it's, it's a very uh, maybe futuristic image to take at this stage. But uh, uh, as of this moment, like I said, retail is not just numbers. It's not just channels. It's the whole thing behind that. You know, you need to have that uh, presence. You need to have that product. You need to have that experience which actually sells and not just being on a certain place or, or being in a certain time or, you know, just, uh, just creating a certain amount of numbers. And actually, uh, what we see is that the, the retail uh, real estate industry, uh, there's actually a shortage. It's not uh, that there is, uh, you know, opportunity is waning or declining on the real estate side. It's actually there is a lot of uh, increasing demand for retail because there is a lot of now uh, brands coming up, a lot of local manufacturing and a lot of initiatives which are now taking place. Uh, so everyone is now requires that specific, you know, even larger spaces, even more spaces. And you see a lot of that now with the, even with the new supermarkets and a lot of brands being created. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, as a country, uh, we have not been an expert in providing the right real estate for the right kind of retail. So the relevant real estate is actually, sometimes it's not available. You know, we haven't urban planned it properly. Uh, where the, the retail outlet should be close to the housing or where they should be close to the different, uh, you know, facilities or infrastructure, that, that supply is not there at the moment. And so you see, uh, you know, uh, modern retail concepts suffering because they can't find the right place, the cost are, or the rentals, there's, there's a mismatch there. We don't have a concept of redevelopment. So if you have a very good location, but it's been made into something else, it's very unlikely that it will be converted into something else in, in the short term. So uh, the, the real scenario is that, uh, uh, you know, for a lot of the brands, uh, the relevant real estate is very uh, limited in supply. And this shortage of supplies is what hurts the retail expansion. And, uh, you know, it's, it, there's a huge opportunity in, the, in that area to, to create that because there is now a, a loss of unfulfilled demand and which cannot be completely filled just by going on a different channel. We really need to find a way to increase or improve our retail real estate industry so that there is enough supply and there is enough uh, increase in, uh, in being able to give, uh, you know, what the retail outlets deserve. Now coming on to shopping malls. 
uh, we treat shopping malls actually as, as almost as a different channel from standalone outlets. Because we're not just a collection of shops, but ultimately what drives a shopping mall is, is an experience. You know, shopping mall is a place where you can spend the whole day. It's a combination of shopping, dining, entertainment, but also just a place to walk around with the family in a very good, safe, air-conditioned, uh, convenient environment. And uh, you know, you have that, it's, it's, a, it's a day journey, it's a, it's a way to spend the day. And uh, you know, apart from that, you have the different options of having, uh, you know, a, uh, in terms of, uh, there is very limited entertainment option in, in Pakistan. So in a way, the shopping mall stands separately from your typical retail, and it it's, creates a different channel for entertainment in which retail, entertainment, and uh, food is fulfilled. And there is a shortage of that in the industry right now. And the biggest problem is because there are uh, restrictions on development, you know, uh, there's availability of land, capital investment, infrastructure. We don't see in the short term a lot of these new uh, big, large size developments coming in. So there are then two challenges. One is to try to create more opportunities. And two is to try to maximize or make your existing places more efficient so that the retailers uh, are able to get more and more uh, space to open their concept stores at the outlets and be able to display you know whatever uh, what however they'd like to display their uh, existing retail so when we look at our business model it's a very simple model uh, you provide people with the best customer experience uh, based on that you create very long term relationship with tenants and eventually it creams, creates long term profit and growth for all and this is, it should be the typical system for any retail real estate. You know, if, if the retailer, the customer, and the landlord are not uh, working together, and if there's not a long-term plan, eventually, you know, the, uh, one of them will fail out, and if one of them fall out, then actually the whole system does not work in the long term. So again, uh, based on this, the strength of this is, of course, uh, the physical experience. The experience by the, the, the real estate, in our case, the mall, experienced by the retailer, because uh, you can have a very good product, but if it's in a, in, not in the right place. Now, for the example, of, for example uh, you could go shopping to different supermarkets, uh, having the same products from the same company. You could have a Unilever shampoo in both different places, but obviously the, the type of customer will be very different uh, based upon the type of real estate. So that real estate environment and that real estate, uh, uh, you know, that, that physical experience is actually a very big definer in terms of uh, separating your uh, uh, real estate and the kind of product you're trying to launch. So uh, when we talk about uh, the, you know, the future mall experience and, and we talk about how to uh, take this forward, we come back to the core. And the core of this is, is you know, five or six main concepts which makes the real estate uh, or the retail market work in shopping malls. So we talk about the, the mall experience, the ambience of inside the mall. We talk about the retail experience, uh, what they're being provided inside the shops, the in-mall activities, uh, the convenience you provide, how you communicate with your customers, and then things like loyalty and reward. And uh, of course, when we talk about uh, the future, uh, we have to remember that our core is, uh, or our core strength is the physical part. So all of this physical aspects uh, if we try to become, we, we can't try to become an e-commerce platform and we can't try to become uh, something which we are not, you know, our, our strength, it will be physical. And so what we do is we build upon these existing cores and we try to enhance them or try to enhance the customer experience by uh, enhancing these uh, or strengthening these cores uh, and uh, adapting them uh, for the time or for the changing times. So for the first part, enhancing the mall experience. And the mall ambience, is, it becomes a very important thing because when you're coming into a place, you want it to feel nice, uh, you know, you want to enjoy your, 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 your time there. So the, of course, the easiest thing or sometimes the most difficult thing is actually to create a, a, new, a new platform. And, uh, you know, for us, uh, we're doing a new mall in Lahore. Uh, you know, there's, there's still a, a lot of work uh, undergoing there. But the, the mall ambience becomes a very important aspect of it. And it's easy to do it for a new project. You know, this has been newly designed and it's been, uh, you know, we put in all our learnings and things inside it. So people get a differentiated experience. Uh, and, uh, you know, 
uh, one key aspect of these uh, is to, of course, have places where, where you would like to be, you know, you like to take pictures, you like to be seen, you like to, you know, meet other people. And uh, again, it's very easy when you do it for new, uh, new projects. Uh, but then, of course, we have a lot of real estate, a lot of key real estate in, in core areas, very good markets. But of course, it's been old, pro old developments now. So the process of redevelopment becomes very important. You know, trying to uh, not just say this asset is old, it's, it's done, but trying to recreate, trying to reimagine and using that strength it has to enhance it over the long term. So, you know, we are, we are very involved in renovations, uh, replanning our spaces and trying to uh, capture and keep that moment uh, which, uh, you know, made them all successful in the first place. And then, of course, the most important thing is the retail experience. And uh, the, again, uh, you know, retail is a very interesting thing. You, uh, you can't define it just with numbers, just with channels, just with, uh, you know, a very basic thing. Uh, you know, why something works, why something doesn't work. It creates a lot of years of experience and it's, it's inside the retailers. Secondly, a, a good building, just a good mall is not enough to uh, work. People don't want to just walk around all day. The, the experience provided by the retail outlets is what creates a lot of the differentiation. So uh, it's, it's very important to focus on that. And, uh, you know, customers want the best brands and the best, best mix of brands. You know, the newness as well is very important that there is continuously something new happening. There's continuous updation and upgrading of stores. A store should be well stocked, you know, good POPs, good window displays, because that, that offers the, the new part of the mall, which is, which is very important. Uh, the third thing is because there is a shortage of real estate and, uh, you know, the, we have to look at how we manage a future allocation of stores. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the best way to do it justice is to actually study the past, to look at the future, and then base a lot of this expansion and space on performance, tenant mix, and business plans. So what we plan to do is actually to work very closely with retailers. I think the retailers and mall have to work together as one uh, and create a platform where we are able to uh, enhance each other and each other's business. Uh, you know, work on business plans, work on sharing data, footfall, uh, you know, other aspects, work on collaborations, you know, try, working together rather than saying, okay, the landlord is this, I am this, he shouldn't know this and I shouldn't know that. You know, it, it's one and we need to put it together. And eventually when there is enough data and there's enough footfall and there's enough thing, I think eventually from that uh, we can move on to a, from a fixed to a hybrid to a variable sales model in the long term. You know, a, a good example of, uh, you know, trying to create something new and trying to create excitement is what we did, uh, actually what Shamoon did, I'm just putting it up on screen, uh, a new uh, Cardi Experience Hub which was created at Dolmall Clifton. And that sort of, uh, you know, goes into the dynamic of how a one store can work for a brand and then also for a mall to, to both to become a key destination uh, for people to visit uh, the, uh, the mall and for the store. Uh, of course, then you move on to the in-mall marketing experience. Uh, we, mall always has to create activities and create a lot of ambiances to invite customers and to enhance the experience. Uh, but mo the mall also has to now work as a generator of content and to create more Instagrammable content. So in a way, it's not just calling people in, but when people come there, they themselves project where they are and they project what they're doing or, or where they're going. And uh, so a lot of the events, a lot of activities, we're now focusing on creating more uh, content which can be photographed, which can be seen, and which people want to show to other people. Uh, we're also looking at, uh, you know, activations, uh, uh, you know, more VR, 3D based activations, but also integrating offline, uh, online channels to offline engagement. So there is a good opportunity to actually, there is a, a to bring online products to offline uh, via th these sort of methods, via pop-up stores, to create that, uh, you know, that mix, to give that opportunity as a platform. Uh, digital screens plays a very important part, not only as creating, you know, advertisements to, for creating ambience, but now we're looking at doing uh, more based on, uh, you know, uh, marketing based on timing or type of visit. So it's more uh, relevant to the type of audience rather than just, you know, the same content playing on uh, every single day. Uh, again, we work a lot on convenience to make sure the customer has a good long-term journey in the mall and you provide all the facilities which they require so that they don't, not in a hurry to leave the mall. Uh, but then we're also looking at new sort of digital age convenience like 
things like payment solutions, things like deliveries, uh, things like click and collect uh, to sort of enhance. Uh, maybe we're looking at you know create, uh, integrating uh, e-commerce platforms as to provide their deliveries inside the mall or to merge or to create pop-up stores to create that presence. Uh, again, we have communication platforms which we're doing traditionally website and social media. Uh, we're doing magazine and online newsletters. Uh, but then we also have our own uh, in-house customer communication uh, all in one platform uh, to connect with all the customers via different channels and for you know outgoing and ingoing communication. And then we have our retail uh, outlets tenant communication platforms to integrate that. So there is ease of working between the two uh, between the two models. Uh, finally, we're also doing a lot of we're planning a lot of these loyalty and reward programs. Uh, loyalty uh, we've done before worked out well, but you know, we're planning to come up with an enhanced version of that. And then we're looking at a more uh, digital based reward system rather than the traditional lucky draw or the traditional, uh, you know, methods of uh, writing your name and sending information, but more through mobile, uh, you know, and in mall visits. So uh, I don't know if you can read that, but uh, what uh, I think from what we've learned from all of this is that there is room for growth actually for each channel. It's not that, you know, one is going down one is going up, there is a huge opportunity for each channel. And we shouldn't be afraid of saying, okay, if I let this happen, then mine will go down. Or if that will happen, this will happen. Uh, it's a huge area of opportunity and, and it's very easy to skip over that. And the second thing is to focus on your strengths. It's to focus on what got you here and to build up further on that uh, using these channels rather than uh, going channel focused and not the other way around. Uh, you know, our uh, approach should be more open rather than closed uh, collaborations. Partnerships are very important because there are a lot of expertise out there. But if we keep a closed book, we will not learn from anyone. We will just learn what's in our own box and we'll stay with there. So very happy again to see these sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, setups and also maybe more discussions based on different technology partners or different retailers trying to create or co-create these kind of opportunities. Uh, a lot of this, uh, you know, decision making should now be based on data and on your, you know, uh, your experience you've gained over time. It's, we're not new brands. We, a lot of them are very old brands and a lot of information available. It sh we should be using that information to create uh, better uh, you know, products or to create better opportunities uh, uh, for our customers. Finally, it's not a one-time thing. Uh, we have to focus on continuous improvement. Uh, we have to focus on making sure uh, where we are today and where we are tomorrow is a very different place. Otherwise, we will start going back. Uh, the technology will keep changing. Uh, the customer preferences will keep changing. So it's a process of continuous improvement. Uh, you know, we're trying to do the same. And, uh, you know, it's easier to, again, to build something new, better. But also we have to make sure our legacy and our, our brands keep improving over time so that, uh, you know, we're able to present ourselves or to keep our core strengths uh, within us. So that's all from me. Uh, thank you.